Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to the new series where we're making a Metroidvania in Unity. In this first video, we'll get our project set up in Unity 6, import our first sprite and slice it up so that it's ready for movement and animation. If you're already all good with those topics, you can jump to the next video where we actually start moving our player. Additionally, if you're an indie dev or just have a cool idea for a game you'd like to make, then stick around at the end of the video to hear about a really cool opportunity to get funding for your project through the Rising Tide Challenge, hosted by this video's sponsor, Blue Ocean Games. So, let's get started. First things first, you'll need to start up a fresh Unity project. So let's open up Unity Hub and click on that shiny new project button. I'll be using Unity 6 for this, but if you're still in the older version, don't worry. Most of what we're doing will translate. Here you can name your project and decide where you want to save it. Next, you'll choose a template. This isn't make or break, it just determines which packages Unity pre-installs for you. For our project, we'll use the Universal 2D. This comes pre-configured with the 2D renderer, which supports lighting, shaders, and other cool modern 2D effects right out of the box. If you don't plan to use 2D lighting or advanced effects, the 2D built-in render pipeline template is a lighter option that loads a bit faster and keeps things simple. The choice depends on whether you want the extra visual features of the URP, or the simplicity of the built-in renderer. We'll just skip the version control box for now. It provides some cool advanced options for saving your project, especially if you're working in a team, but it's kind of overkill for what we're doing here. All right, let's hit that create project button. Now, before we get into Unity, I just wanted to let you know that for this project, I'll be using the generic character asset by Brolov, which is available for free on itch.io. All right, now once we get into your Unity project, you can head on down to the Assets panel, where we're just gonna right click and create a folder. We're gonna call this one Sprites, as this is where we're gonna store those files we just downloaded. Now, if you're new to Unity, the Scene panel is where we build our level. And this is where we're gonna drag and drop any elements that we want to add, like our character. So let's go on into our Sprites folder, and I'm gonna use the blue character here. Now, there's two files here, and you can see that there's actually lots of sprites here, and they've already been pre-sliced for us. However, the sizing varies from sprite to sprite, which is something we're going to change. At the moment, if I just drag this entire file into the scene view, it's going to want to make an animation. I'm just going to show you what would happen if we do that. I'll create an animations folder here in my assets, hit save, and now if I zoom in on my player and go to the animation panel, you can see all of those frames have now been added into the animation. If you don't have an animation panel, you can find it under window, go to animation, and animation. Now, at the moment, if I were to hit play, you can see that it just plays through every single frame, which obviously is not quite what we want. Now we've got a little bit of work to do setting up this sprite. Let's click on the character file, head over to our inspector here, make sure your sprite mode is set to multiple as there's more than one frame, and then we can open the sprite editor. Here we're just going to re-slice this. We're going to use the grid by cell size rather than automatic, and then we just need to pick the actual pixel size for each of these characters. This one is not 60, it's actually 56 by 56. You can choose to keep empty recs if you want, but otherwise, we're just gonna slice and click apply. Now when we exit the editor, you'll notice there's still some problems with our player, and the first is that he's very blurry. If we head back over to the inspector here, we're just gonna change the filter mode from bilinear to point and click apply. Additionally, there's a little bit of discoloration going here, and to get better fidelity, we're gonna change the format from automatic to RGBA 32-bit. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Finally, if I zoom out here and toggle my gizmos on, you can see where my camera is. The player is very, very small within that space. We're just gonna go to our pixels per unit here. Currently, it's set to 100 pixels per unit. And if I turn on my grid here, you can see that 100 pixels in each of these squares is far more than we need for a character this size. If we make that a smaller number, like say 16, the character will get larger and fill the space much nicer. At this point, I'm just going to go to my hierarchy and delete this player with all his crazy animations and go to my animations folder and just remove those as well. At this point, we're ready to set up our actual player. So let's come over to the hierarchy where we're just going to right click and create an empty game object. Now, as soon as we added that object, a transform component showed up here in the inspector, which just allows us to control the position, rotation and scale of that object. Next, we're going to create a 2D sprite square. This is going to be renamed as sprite. This is just because I like to keep the physics on a parent object and the visuals on a child. That said, you'll notice there's a problem, which is just if we move the sprite, it can become separated from the parent, existing in different spaces. So we want to make sure at all times to keep the sprite zeroed out. 
And anytime we want to move the player, move the parent. All right, at this point, let's just grab our character blue and drag him into the sprite slot on our sprite. And there we go, we've got a player. Now, if I hit the play button right now, we'll have the world's most boring game. So let's get out of play mode. And what we're gonna do first of all is add some ground. Later, we'll add tile maps, but for now, we're just gonna add another sprite square. And then we'll use our rect tool to drag it out, make it larger. And if you want, you can head over to the sprite renderer and at least for now, give it some color. So it looks like maybe grass or something. Now next we want to add some physics to our player. So if we click on the parent object, head over to our inspector, we're just going to add a component called a rigid body 2D. Make sure to get the 2D version or it won't work properly. This controls things like mass and gravity scale and you'll see if we press play that our player now falls. That said, we need some solidity here. So let's add a collider. In this case, I'm going to use a capsule collider 2D. There's also a box one, but I like the capsules. It has nice smooth edges on the bottom so that he doesn't get caught on objects when he's trying to walk past them. Additionally, it keeps us from having a single pixel of hair colliding with a ceiling and making him not able to move. I'll just use the edit collider tool here to make this shape just a little smaller than the player. That way he gets the benefit of the doubt when an enemy attacks and doesn't get hit because the enemy happened to just barely touch his cloak or something like that. I'm just going to click on my ground object here, rename it, and then add a box collider 2D. You'll notice the collider automatically sizes to the shape. Now when we hit play, our player falls and lands solidly on the ground. And just like that, we have set up our project and we've got our character ready for our first script, which is going to take care of things like moving and flipping. We'll get to that in the next video, but hey, before you go, I just want to tell you about an amazing opportunity to win funding for your indie game project. If you're an inspiring indie game developer like me, then you probably know how hard it is to get funding for your project. The Rising Tide Challenge is a concept trailer competition that can help with that. You submit a trailer showcasing your idea for a game. Whether it's just an idea or a project already in development, there's a track in the competition for you. There are multiple prizes for each track with the winner of the public vote and judges pick earning $1,000 each. Not to mention that the top developers get a chance to pitch their concept to Blue Ocean Games for a shot at up to 300,000 in funding. Now, if you're not a developer or your game idea isn't ready to share just yet, you can still pop on over to Blue Ocean Games to cast your vote once the competition opens on September 22nd. And if you're watching this video after that time, still head on over there as there are more competitions planned in the future. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Until that time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.